All right, ladies and gents, let's jump into this. Not a walk and talk, but it's raining and shitty outside, and I promised you guys that I would do this. And I will post these um, individual questions in stories because I messaged each of these people back um, on an individual basis just so, like, some people like vis visuals versus, um, like, watching a video. So let's jump into this. I got 13 really good questions. I got more than that, but these were were the biggies. Okay, so question number one. During a healing phase, what's more important, um, fat or protein? So, and this is going to be the answer to like the majority of your questions, and I know that you guys get sick of hearing it, but it really depends. Like guys, we are so different on an individual basis, you know, from our medical backgrounds, our health needs, what workouts we like, so our training modalities, um, you know, what is our specific body goals? What's our emotional relationship with food? What's our physical relationship with food? So many things go into this. So like macros are going to be different. What calories are appropriate for you are going to be different. What's your starting point? Foundational levels are really, really important. And getting real on that, like tracking food, black and white data, like that is going to answer the majority of a lot of y'all's questions. It's just self-awareness. Lack of self-awareness is a lot of the issue when people are like, well, this diet doesn't work or it didn't work for me. Well, did you know where you were starting before? And like, what's your why? So let's jump into this. So whether fat or protein is more important, it really did. Um, and really, I don't know what you mean by that. Whether which ones, they're both important. Protein is always important no matter what diet. It stays pretty consistent. I would say regardless of what diet you're doing, I mean, you could tweak it here and there depending on if you're in like a dieting phase. Sometimes people will raise their protein levels again. I don't know how um, steep your calorie deficit is. So all different, but really um, during a healing phase, you want to make sure that you're eating enough food in general. So you want to make sure if you don't know what your maintenance calories are, at least your maintenance calories, you need to get on an online calculator or something and figure out what those are. I like the T-D-E-E calculator.net. That's the one that I prefer to use. Just put your information in there. It'll spit out your maintenance levels. Make sure you choose the right activity level. Um, and then that'll kind of give you a general idea on what your calories should be. As far as protein, general rule of thumb, again, everybody's different. One gram of protein per pound of body weight if you're in normal range is kind of a general range. Some people are on the higher side. So when I'm doing stricter carnivore, I prefer a higher protein approach. I can even get my protein up to 1.5 grams per body weight. I'm 105 pounds. I'm 5'1". I'm 41 years old. So just for um, perspective purposes, you know, go your own way. Always, guys, always chase health first. Eat for health. Um, first and foremost, um, you want to make sure that you're not cutting fat. So a big problem I see with people going carnivore in general is you're eating super lean meat. You're not hitting your calories because you're not eating enough fat in the meats that you're choosing. Um, so you need to choose fatty cuts of meat. Make sure you're getting that fat in because our fats are our precursors to our hormones. So if we are not eating enough healthy fats, one, you're typically getting cravings. Um, typically your protein gets too high. Uh, because you're hungry, you know, when you're eating lean meats all the time, I find that like we tend to get a lot hungrier. Um, you might find that you're like peeing all the time, like your sleep is shitty, you feel bad in the gym, you have no energy. So take a look at one, how many calories you're consuming. Two, how much fat am I consuming? Is my protein too high? Um, carbs, you know, this particular person I believe is trying to do a lower carb approach, so we won't get into that right now. Um, and the second part of her question was, do you recommend doing protein sparing modified fasting during this phase? Uh, my weight loss is stalled. I'm three weeks in. Okay, first off, those are two different body goals. A healing phase, super important to be eating enough ample calories because dieting in general is a really huge stress on the body. All right, so you need to get real on your why. Like, are you in a healing phase or are you in a fat loss phase? Two completely different ways of eating. Um, you know, workouts may be different or may not be different, but y you need to figure that out first in order for me to really answer that. You got to choose your why. Always track your food. 
most people, when you go on a diet, you really don't need to tweak or make any macro adjustments until about three or four weeks in. I'd say about three weeks in, if you're being super consistent, you know, you're tracking everything like licks, bites, everything's been, you know, your workouts, you're nailing those. So take a look at what you're doing on a daily basis. Are you be seriously being consistent with absolutely everything? Um, before saying something's not work or I'm stalling. But first and foremost, get real on your why because those are two completely um, different ways of eating. So that was a really, really good question though. Um, two, want to stay carnivore, struggling with binges. So first of all, again, what's your why? Why are you choosing carnivore? Um, you know, are you eating enough calories? Are you eating, you know, like maybe sugar-free triggers or treats, keto treats, or, you know, you're sneaking in carbs here or there, you know, are you eating trigger foods? Like, you know, uh, we need to know those things kind of about your lifestyle. What's your relationship with food? I'm assuming you don't have a really good emotional relationship with carbohydrates. If you are trying to stay carnivore or struggling and you're still, um, having binges with carbohydrates and sugar, Best way, speaking from personal experience always, these are just suggestions for y'all, completely cut all of the sugar-free shit out. Anything that is a trigger, get it out because the more that you allow yourself to have those things, the more you're wiring your brain that that is normal. Highly recommend the book Brain Over Binge for anyone who has a bad re emotional relationship with food carbs in general. It will change your life. It will help you understand why you're going um, through and feeling what you are feeling towards food. And it'll give you some suggestions as to um, solutions and what to do from there. Excellent book. Um, really helped me. So cut trigger foods. Make sure you're eating enough food in general. Because a lot of times we're coming from a restriction background. We're not giving our bodies enough nourishment. So that's why we're having the binges. Because it's trying to protect itself. Make sure you're uh, consuming ample fat as well. So make sure that that way of eating is sustainable for you. It may be, it may not be. Again, I don't know your story, um, but I would cut all trigger foods out, control what you can control, control your environment. Um, worried about fats on carnivore? Will kicking um, carbs help my A1C? Absolutely will. Generally speaking, I'm not a physician, but just from my personal experience, um, I wouldn't worry about much about fats on carnivore. Again, I don't know your genetic background um, and disposition. I don't know your medical history. Um, but I'd say as long as you're, you know, managing the basics of like healthy routine, healthy habits, you know, good circadian rhythm, like you have good quality sleep, you're choosing foods that are, you know, healthy. So healthy, you know, animal based foods, healthy fats. You know, you're doing all, checking all the boxes and, you know, positive mindset, positive affirmations, things like that. Getting your steps in and your workouts and water and all the fun stuff, basic, easy stuff. I wouldn't worry about it much. Just make sure like if you're having labs done, uh, they're doing like full lipid profiles to like paint a full picture um, and uh, Dave Feldman was really helpful. I dove into his research. Um, about hyper responders because my cholesterol did significantly increase um, and so did my LDL when I started but like my HDL is sky high my good cholesterol is great um, cardiac score was a zero you know not really having any any problems like as long as like my lifestyle and environment's not super stressful I've had to add some carbs back into my diet here recently just due to stress and you know, just experimentation. I'm in a building phase too, but you know, um, enough about that, but don't worry about it. Just make sure you do your research. Um, tons of information out there. Get the old Google and the YouTube out and have at it. Um, let's see, when should I start tracking macros on carnivore? Immediately. <laughs> I know you guys don't like to track, but if it, to really get a good idea foundationally where you are, you really need to know accurately how many cons uh, calories you're consuming as a foundational standpoint. Where are your macro ratios? All of this is important. It's just black and white data. You guys have to learn to take the emotion out of it, just like weighing yourself on the scale. Okay, take the emotion out of it. Get your data. Collect your data. Go from there. That'll make adjustments super duper easy because I made a lot of mistakes too when I started carnivore. Um, I was eating like whole racks of ribs, whole chuck rows, smashing super fatty meat. I gained 15 pounds when I started and it just would have helped me 
know where my body functioned best as far as macro ratios, like how much protein is best for me, how much fat is too much for me. Oh, I'm gaining weight because I'm smashing all these fatty foods and my, you know, fat is super high. My digestion's shit. Oh, okay. I ate way too much fat that day. Like it's just going to help you understand instead of saying, fuck it, carnivore doesn't work or whatever diet, because that's what happens. But you guys aren't getting real on your foundational standpoint, what you're relationship is with food, how many calories you're eating, what your story is, whether you've been chronically dieting forever, you know, they say, well, you know, fucking Bob down the road, like he's lost 50 pounds. Well, maybe Bob down the road was smashing fucking McDonald's every single day and consuming 5,000 plus calories and sitting. And he now just simply started walking and stuck to meat cut his calories in half, well, of course, Bob's going to lose weight. But then we have, you know, like chronically dieting, you know, Sally or Karen or whatever fucking name you want to put there down the road. I've been dieting my entire life. I've been trying to survive off of a thousand calories or, you know, 1200 calories because my fitness pal told me that that's what I needed to do to lose weight. And so when I start actually eating like a grown ass fucking woman that works out and is active, which for most active women working out three to four times a week, getting 10 to 15,000 steps a day, your maintenance calories are probably, again, use the calculator, anywhere from like, I don't know, 1850 to like 2100 plus. And I'm not bullshitting you. You guys really should be eating that much. You know, so obviously when you start eating carnivore, you start eating really healthy, nourishing foods and raising your calories up to what you should be eating. Naturally, your body's going to think that you're in a surplus and you're not but it's because you've been under eating for so long. Like it's just trying to figure things out. So track your food, guys. Just track all the data. It'll make adjustments so much easier. How much protein a day should I be eating? Um, like I said, general range, one gram per pound of body weight. Um, for people, normal weight ranges, you may want to eat a little bit less. If you have more weight to lose, maybe choose your goal weight and go off of that. Um, I would say... You know, like just stick to those general ranges and then experiment. Everything is experimentation, y'all. Um, let's see. Any way to track um, ribeye accurately if I cut the fat off? Uh, I mean, not really. That's why I stick to ground meat the majority of the time and eggs because it's the easiest to, to um, log, weigh, and track. I always log and weigh my food with the raw version. I don't weigh when it's cooked because your meat shrinks 20 to 30 percent via the cooking process. So make sure that you are logging your meat correctly, like just consistently. So if in MyFitnessPal you are, you like to log and weigh your meat cooked, you need to make sure that the option that you're choosing in your MyFitnessPal says cooked. Because nine times out of ten, it's the raw version and it's off. And that accounts for hundreds of calories missed. You know, so make it easy on yourself. Basic as fuck nutrition makes tracking super duper easy. Um, let's see. There's also a really good article if you Google like does cooking meat make it cook up leaner or something like that. There's an article that comes up that will give you like a graph that shows you the difference. So when I got my air fryer, made the huge mistake of I air fried my meat, but I wasn't consuming the fat that was in the bottom of the air fryer. So like I was under eating calories because I wasn't getting my fat in. Like I didn't even think about it. So I'm just like you guys, like I had to learn this throughout the process too. So make sure you're consuming that fat if you're cooking in the air fryer or in your pan, because if not, your meat is actually cooking up leaner because you're not consuming that fat. Think about it. Um, and then your calories, if you're logging, weighing, tracking are going to be off too. And then things aren't going to make sense. So make sure that you're doing that correctly. Get a food scale. Um, that's the most accurate. Like eyeballing, when you start doing shit right, the right way first, eyeballing will become super easy and then you don't have to track your food anymore. I barely have to track my food at all. Unless I'm in a specific phase, something's not going right, like maybe with my gut or aesthetically I don't feel right, or just something's off. That's the only time I really track. Um, tips to maximize workouts with adrenal insufficiency. Um, help, <laughs> my body is working against me. Well, okay, so choose lower intensity workouts. Take it easy. Walking, you know, strength training should be a priority no matter what diet goal, no matter what you're doing. Especially as women, as we age, strength training is really important. 
no need to kill yourself, especially if you are going through adrenal insufficiency. Um, again, make sure that you're eating enough calories because oftentimes you guys are stuck in that diet orthorexia, like you're really pushing it too much in the gym. But I know I'm in a healing phase, but I'm still under eating and I'm still over exercising. You guys really need to commit 100% to these healing phases, which means eating enough food, getting in ample fat, you know, getting, trying to make peace with your body and food because a lot of us have issues when we're going through this kind of stuff. Um, chill, like positive affirmations. I literally will Google on YouTube every morning, like positive morning affirmations or however I'm feeling, you know, like heal my body affirmations. Like it really does help. So, um, low intensity stuff, reduce stress as much as possible. Focus on good sleep. Chill the fuck out. <laughs> you don't always have to kill yourself. Um, let's see. Electrolytes. Should I be taking them all day long? It depends. Like, I don't know. Are you like using a sauna, sweating all the time? Are you an athlete? How much do you work out? Um, are you carnivore? I don't know what you're eating. Like, I don't have any idea. For me personal, I like Ultima Replenisher. Um, L Element T, Element, or however y'all say it. I like it, but it's a little too high in sodium for me. I wish that I liked plain water, but I fucking hate it. <laughs> so, um, the Ultima Replenisher is a little bit milder. There's not as much, uh, salt in it, and it's flavored with stevia. No carbs, no sugar, but I love the flavor. Grape's probably my favorite. That's just what I use, and I just sip on it all day. Um, but I sauna almost every single day. I work out at least five to six days a week, and I'm super active. Stressful job, on my feet all day. So I probably consume, you know, more than your average Joe. So go your own way, just play around with it. Uh, do you work out different during PMS? No, like I don't, I don't change my workouts or my lifestyle depending on my fucking cycle. I'm just gonna leave that there. Yeah, I mean, you guys are free to do whatever you want, but no. Like I said in my walk and talk the other day, if you constantly eat and live your life based upon your emotions, it's really hard to be successful because emotions are fleeting. Emotions are fleeting. Nothing is forever. So be a person that keeps commitments to yourself. Control what you can control. Control your environment. Don't fucking worry about the rest of the stuff. Um, steps in a day for weight loss. Again, I don't know. I don't know how active you are. It's going to be different. I don't know how much food you're eating. Um, I don't I don't know your medical history. So general range for most people is 10,000 steps a day. I think most people know that. Like if you Google search, whatever. Um, I get about 15,000 plus a day. You know, I have an active job. That's just my goal. That's what I feel comfortable with. Um, that your body will get used to whatever activity level you do after a while. Just like everything else. So... Say you're in a dieting phase, you've been super consistent, um, you know, you've been good with food and just the lever's not working. And this is why I say don't kill yourself with cardio because you can use cardio as a lever. Just up your steps a couple thousand steps. That's all you got to do. Like you guys don't have to kill yourself in the gym. So play around with it. Um, let's see, carnivore during menopause. I had a nice long discussion with my friend here. Again, it depends. I don't know what your medical history is. Um, I don't know if you're having problems. Um, I know, like for me, I'm perimenopausal. I'm in 41. You know, I'm 41. Um, my health history is a little different. I had cervical cancer in my mid-20s. So, like, I I don't really, I don't have a period anymore. Um, I'm infertile. I, I don't, I can't have kids. So, like, my experiences might be, are going to be a little bit different than yours. So, again, different for everyone. Um, some people do better with carbs, adding carbs back in. Some don't. Some do better with higher fat carnivore. I know this specific person does low carb, you know, carnivore. Uh, some don't. Some do better with higher protein. It just depends on what your goals are. What are your training modalities? What do you feel best doing? Is it easier for you to hit your, you know, calories with higher fat? Like, there's a million different things that play in here. So I can't tell you yes or no. You're just going to have to experiment with it. Um, there was another question that kind of piggybacks. So it, should I add carbs back in? I've been carnivore to regain my cycle after years of amenorrhea. So 
for this particular, I'm, I'm going to say it's not going to hurt you to experiment. Carps aren't the devil, guys. They're not the devil. It's our relationship with them that causes problems. They are super helpful, especially if you're an athlete. Um, you're someone who's super duper active. Maybe you're going through a stressful period. Maybe you have IBS or IBD like I do. I have Crohn's disease for people who are new here. Sometimes I have to add in, uh, you know, I have to go to a more low residue, lower fat diet if I'm in a flare up. You know, so that's gluten-free oats for me right now on occasion. Um, white rice, things that are low fiber, plain um, rice cakes and rice checks cereal are kind of my safe carbs. Um, that I'm able to like portion control for the most part. They're going to be different for everybody, but it wouldn't hurt. Um, most often when I add carbs back in, like for me, I do mine post-workout. And if, if someone's having trouble sleeping, they will help lower your cortisol level. Because carbs, as far as macros, are our biggest antagonist to our, our cortisol level. They will help you sleep timed, you know, more in the evening. So you know, maybe play around with that, choose some safe carbs, play around with portion sizes, quality and quantity matter. Don't go ham on shit like processed carbs, you know, like um, candies and, and stuff like that. Like choose the more natural whole, whole food versions, you know, like maybe it's sweet potatoes for you. If you don't have a lectin sensitivity, you know, maybe it's berries, maybe it's white rice. I don't know. So play around with it. Um, I'm nervous to get labs done after going meat based. Should I be? Well, again, thoughts become things and I'll harp on that and harp on that. If you constantly live in fear, and this is another question, how do you stay true to yourself with all the hate in the world? If you guys are always living in fear and you feel that you live in a universe that is hate filled, which, you know, let's, we don't live in a fucking bubble. You know, it's not rainbows and sunshine. Like we're humans and humans are mean. You know, we're, we're human creatures with human emotions and not everybody's nice, you know, but I feel just personally, I control my environment. I control my mindset. I try to cultivate the most positive, loving relationship with the world and people and myself that I can. I tell myself I live in a positive, loving universe, and that's exactly what I'm going to get back. I don't watch negative shows. I don't watch um, very much bad TV, really. I don't watch scary shows. I don't watch shit that's going to make me fearful. I don't listen to negative music. Um, I surround my life and my environment with all the good fucking juju out there. I, get, I cut toxic people out. I don't even care if I've been friends with you for a million years. If, if you turn into a shit bag and you're low vibe and you are an ener energy vampire and you take energy away from me and I, and I don't feel good after hanging around you, I, I'm kind of a savage when it comes to that. I will fucking cut you out of my life. Um, it is what it is. Let me hate me, whatever. I say all this with love, you know, but there comes a time where you have to get real. And you have to put your own oxygen mask on. Because if you don't put your own oxygen mask on and take care of yourself first, it's really hard to serve others with a full loving heart. So you guys control your environment. Developing a more stoic way of living was really helpful for me. So um, I just, and that's not saying I'm emotionless you know, or uh, not empathetic. I'm very empathetic. You guys know that I am an energy feeler, extremely empathetic. I spend a lot of time alone because I have to. Spending time alone will help just to like clear the noise, cut the noise because we get lost in all of the fucking chatter everywhere. Um, just do you. It's just like people criticizing for making you making diet changes or you fearing that people are judging you for whatever decisions you're doing. Whether it's, you know, love, your job, relationships, um, food, workouts, whatever. At the end of the day, you just got to do you. And I'm just, I'm going to end on that note because it's getting super long. At the end of the day, you do you. I hope you guys eat and live in a way that makes you feel amazing. I don't care what diet you do. I love all of you guys. These were really good questions today. Um, so hopefully this wasn't too long. High five to all my people that actually watched this. I will post all these questions and my responses in my stories. So there will be lots of fucking stories to go through on Instagram, um, at all resources, guides, links, whatever you want is in the link in my Instagram, Instagram, click on it. It's all there. 
my story, on my healing. It'll answer a lot of your questions if you've had issues like me. Oh my gosh, send me a DM if you need anything else. Peace, love, meat, and whatever fucking diet you want to do. I love you guys. Bye, y'all.